We're going to try to predict marriage frequency between all these people using monthly income, number of previous romantic relationships, number of parties per month. You'll notice those are three continuous variables, but we're also going to throw gender and handedness in there, which are categorical variables. So we're just going to do this, what I'm going to call the Gebert's way, okay? We're going to do a hierarchical and put these in one at a time by that. Oh, let me show you what's going on here. Okay, so I got those. Let's switch over to our data sheet. So we're going to go to Analyze, Regression. Where are you? Linear. All right, so the DV is Marriage Frequency. All right, we're going to just stick them in one at a time. So monthly income goes in to the independent next. Number of previous relationships goes in next. Number of, what is that, number of previous partners? Oh, number of parties per month. Ooh, that's a big one. Next. And then it was, what was it, gender? Hold on. Gender and handedness. So gender, gender, gender. There's gender. Next and handedness. So gender and handedness are both. Oops, get back in there. Gender and handedness are both categorical variables. So this is going to come out a little bit different than I would do it. But again, I'm just going to do this the quick and dirty way. Okay, so statistics. We want all these guys here. They're going to check our assumptions as we go plots z pred on the bottom z residual on the, on the y save uh, you can use cooks or leverage if you want I'm a Mahalanobis guy to the day I die it looks for outliers multivariate outliers and options what do we got here I don't care about that and the rest is okay so we're gonna hit okay and here's our output. Let's go. Do, do, do. There's the descriptives. Don't care about that in the regression correlations. We really don't care about that either. So you see how they're entered, entered, entered. More than one enter, that means it's hierarchical. We put them in order. So here's the model summary. So here's the first model right here. So that's A. That's simply monthly income and number of marriage frequency. So it is significant. So in other words, how much money they make is related to how many times they've been married in the first model. The second model, we added number of previous relationships. There was nothing there, right? The significant change was nothing. And get rid of that stupid double click sign. So model number three is number C. We added number of parties per month that they attend. Nothing there. And... D, the fourth row here is, let me get this, this fourth row is D. That's when we added their gender. Gender had nothing to do with it. And the last one was when we added whether they're left-handed or right-handed, and that had nothing to do with it either. So according to this model, the only significant predictor is money. So money is a good predictor of how many times they're going to be married. But let's keep looking. So the first model is significant. If the first model is significant, when they add these other variables, they're all going to be significant as well, so we don't pay attention to them. Our coefficients. We're just going to look at the last model here. And the monthly income is still significant, and the rest of them are not. So that's the only one that is significant. Now let's check on our some of our um, variable assumptions. So for the, the, for the assumptions of the variables, the first one is linearity. I look at the correlation box, right? And if the correlations here, if there's anything that's a zero, not, not the significance, but the actual correlations themselves, I don't see any zeros, therefore linearity was not violated. Durbin-Watson was 1.753, which was between 1.5 and 2.5, so that means autocorrelation was not violated. So looking at the ANOVA, we can go all the way down to the fifth fifth box here. That's with all of the variables in there, and it's still significant. I would use these to quote it. 
and then just say the only one that was significant was monthly income and coefficients lovely coefficients over here they it has the collinearity statistics and again we should probably use this fifth box down here and none of the tolerances are less than 0.1 and none of the VIFs are greater than 10. Nobody here is greater than 10. Nobody here is greater or less than 1.1, so you're good. And what am I missing here? Oh, yeah, we need to look at the Mahalanobis distance. So the biggest is 24.3 which is probably maybe one or two of them that might be a significant difference. I'll have to look that up on a Mahalanobis scale. Give me a second here. Okay, here's my calculator sheet. And alphas that I just looked. There's 124 subjects. And we used five variables, right? Uh, one, two, three, plus the two categorical. So the cutoff is 22.538. So you do have at least one let's go back to our data sheet put these in right order so remember anything over 22 point whatever i just said is going to be an outlier so you only got one you got one dang it you got one multivariate outlier which in my humble opinion just leave it in there because it's not that bad of a thing anyway All right you got one and it's barely over there so just leave it alone so that's one, two, three, four, almost one more. Let's go check homoscedasticity, which is like homogeneity variance for a multiple regression model. Where are you, homoscedasticity? Standardized residuals are the Y, and the X is the standardized predicted value. So we're going to add a lowest line in there. Double click. Add the best fit line. And at the same time, add the lowest line. No jokes. Click. And hopefully that line is pretty smooth. Eh, not very smooth. So it looks like it might have violated the assumption of homoscedasticity. If it didn't, this line would be flat and horizontal. Okay, but it looks like it might have violated the assumption. And that's about it. Hope it helps. MGZ out.